Um, who are your um, top offensive players, and what are some of the skills that they bring to the team this year? Um, to me, we don't have any top offensive players. We all just use each other. We all block for each other. We all got to lay our life on the line for each other. To me, if we can substitute anybody, and we won't make a difference. Well, let me uh, rephrase that question then. <laughs> who are some of the um, who are some of your skilled players that will see a lot more time than other players, and um, include also, of course, your uh, offensive linemen who are who who are uh, who will get more reps than others. Okay. Uh, of course, you got Corey Slaughter and Jerry Brookmore, and you have Lavelle Cloy, Charles Johnson. Uh, we got a new transfer from Tiffin. His name is Jalen Johnson. Um, Justin Favors, Vaughn Kane. On the offensive line, we have Quinjon McLaren, Mike Mawaga, James Brace, and Daniel Allen, Jalen Minifee. Those are your five star linemen. And at the running back position, we have um, Reginald Harris, um, Kyle. He's a new transfer from California. Mont Sutherland, Clint Singleton. Coach said you were hurt last, got hurt in the first game last year. Yes, ma'am. And you sat out the whole. So how how tough was it to sit out this season, and how excited are you to be able to play again this year? Uh, it was pretty tough having to sit out uh, every weekend was a, was a struggle. It really was just having to go out and watch my team play, and not being able to help out or anything because. Uh, it was really the first real big time injury I've ever had in my career playing football. So it was a new experience and I kind of got a chance to be on the outside looking in uh, on what's actually going on with the offense and play calling and personnel. So uh, while I was sitting out, I kind of just strengthened my mind for the game. So um, going into this season, I'm looking forward to like just having a good knowledge of what's going on out there and what our offense is trying to do. And I just want to share that knowledge with everybody else that I play with, all the other receivers, so we can all be disciplined in what we do and be efficient with what we do. So uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking coming back this year is going to be pretty exciting, pretty fun, and I'm looking forward to putting on a show if I can. And so you were talking about being on the sideline, that you learned a lot. Yes, ma'am. Just being on it. And do you all kind of take last year, I know it had to be a disappointment with the way the season, the record, but do you kind of take last year as a learning experience and try to build on that coming into this year? Yeah, I really take it as a learning experience because, like Coach said, I was a freshman coming in. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I didn't really know any teams in our conference. But now I'm going into games, I know what to expect. I know what team strength and weaknesses are. Um, I know how to study film now. I know how to prepare for games. And getting all these weapons that we got this year, getting Whitmore back is just a, a big change for us this year. Who are uh, some of your newer players besides the ones you mentioned who transferred in? Uh, who are some of your other new players who will immediately contribute to the team? Um, well, Brian Henderson, Rich had it last year. He'll definitely contribute. Uh, we got a couple of new freshmen on the O line. Um, I can't, his name is Marcus, he's from North Harden. He's a right tackle. Oh, we had a big tight end. His name is Mike, called Big Mike. He's really <laughs> And uh, I think that's all on the offensive side. We don't really have a lot of new new faces. We just have a lot of guys that reasserted last year from the playing this year. Um, what kind of uh, training or drills have you guys gone through to try to cut down on any mental mistakes? Um, to cut down on mental mistakes, we do a lot of a film study before and after practice, come in for about an hour, meet with our coaches, make sure we understand like what's going on, especially being with a new offense. So once we get out on the field, we don't have a lot of busted plays and we can keep the high tempo up. So 
besides that, we just try to be athletes out there. We know, we know um, this is what we do. So once we get out there with the knowledge, it helps us just compete at a higher level. Coach mentioned um, um, Shane Boyd coming in to um, coach this year. Um, has he spent any time with you guys yet? And um, what are you expecting from him as far as um, his contribution to the team and to your development? Uh, well, yes, Coach Boyd spent the spring with us. And he had to leave, like Coach said, to go play arena league. But just having an actual quarterback coach that I can connect with, because he's kind of a young guy, he's still playing. So he understands more of the outside of football, off the field life. So you can really just go to him for anything. He's a great mentor. He's gonna make sure you do everything right all the time. And he's just gonna stay on you. He's not gonna let you slack. He's gonna tell you everything how it is. He's not gonna sugarcoat anything. And me as a player, I really love that about him. Coach, so, um, how many of the guys and you can play around with this question if you want to. But how many of you guys uh, plan to uh, get a thousand yards receiving and a thousand yards rushing? Oh uh, well, um, we're not really looking at statistical wise because if we go ten and zero, we're all gonna get exposed anyway. So whoever goes for a thousand goes for a thousand. But like I said, we're just gonna try to spread the ball, use our speed. Okay. And well, and that was one of the um, changes that you mentioned also, as well as your coach, that you won't have as much focus on just a couple of players, um, but but it will be spread out a lot more. So is it is it more of an open spread, uh, a traditional spread offense, or will it still have your uh, traditional fullback, um, halfback, uh, wide receivers? Uh, well, it depends on really the personnel that we want to go with. We can switch it up for different teams, but our main goal is to just spread the defense out, put people in vines, and make defensive guys make quick decisions. And with our defense, I feel like we have the best defense in the conference, so practicing against them, I feel like it just makes us 10 times better. So have there been any scraps between you guys, the <laughs> offense and the defense out there? Uh, have, they, have they been really tough on you guys? Uh, I'm going to just say it's football. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you uh, some co a, a couple questions on academics um, as a player. Um, your, um, your coach and the administration have um, lauded you guys for your academics. Um, is that what you guys, or what, what the majority of your teammates, and as, as well as yourself, look at uh, as far as playing for Kentucky State that you came to Kentucky State to get an education first to be athlete second and then hopefully to even move on to being a professional in, in the uh, private or public sector or even as athletes well I think being here um, the attitude is that we have to get our academics together in order to even play the game so this is a game that we love and that we've spent our life doing. And throughout that time, we've been doing it while going to school. So um, our administration, they push us to be the best students that we can be. Um, we have required study hall for new students and freshmen. Um, they put us in a lot of situations to where we stay on top of our studies. So um, when I came into college, I was looking forward to getting a degree because you know, I'm about to be the first person in my family to get one. So, and, and I know a lot of a lot of teammates that I have are sitting in the same boat as I am. But they're going to be first generation college graduates. So, yeah, it's really exciting to be able to play college football and get an education together. And academics is really important to everybody, and we're trying to make sure that it's important to everybody and keep that tradition going. And, and speaking of. Um, academic part. Um, one person who really does not get mentioned a lot is Mr. Rich. Uh, how much has he contributed to, to your success uh, academically? Well, he, he is a guy that he looks out 
from us, you know what I'm saying? If there's something that we're having trouble with, if there's anything that we need, he's going to lobby for us, and he's going to, you know, kind of go out of the way where everybody else wouldn't go out of the way to do. And uh, he's a real big help for a lot of our players. And, you know, he, there's been a few times where he's had to help me, and I know a lot of people can say the same. He's just a really good guy, and he cares about our success and making sure we make it through academically. My name is Trayvon Spencer. I play Will Linebacker for the Texas State University. And um, I'm followed by, by Dale Simon, who plays uh, Sam and Mike Linebacker. And then our strong safety, Jermaine Graham. And uh, we run a base 4 3 defense. Um, we got a lot of vets with uh, returners, as I should say. And um, we're looking for a great season. Um, my name is Jermaine Graham. I'm a senior here in my third year starter. Um, I play free safety, a little strong safety. Um, I mean, we have a very physical defense. Um, we play very fast. We really focus on running to the ball, being physical, and just we are assignment defense. So we pretty much is a gap control defense, and we rely on everyone to do their jobs, and we need every man, no one's above the team on defense. Everyone has a job, and in order for the puzzle to come together, everyone must do their job. So we really hold each other accountable on defense. And we're accountable defense. And just to piggyback off what these guys said, uh, we look to be very physical this year, very aggressive up front throughout our defense. Uh, we're going to play extremely fast and force offenses to uh, come to have an up tempo because we're going to be right back with our tempo. And we're going to be very aggressive in each, each and every down. Any questions? Um, who are your um, top returners and newcomers this year, and what are some of the skill sets that they bring? Um, when it comes to top returners, I feel like everyone who's been in the system, they're all top returners. So, for example, Trevon Spencer, he's a real linebacker. He's very important to the team. He's a leader to the team. He's a captain to the team. Um, he possesses the skill of speed, play recognition, and he's just great at what he do. Um, to the left side of me, like Dale Simmons, he's a very physical linebacker. He's very smart. You can put him at the sim. You can put him at the mic. It don't matter where you move him from, he's going to get the job done. Um, we have players like Vincent, Vincent Edwards, he's a safety and he understands what his job is. So as I said before, we're all role players, so we play our roles and that puts the puzzle together. And on defense, we really hold each other accountable for doing your job. So no matter who's in, and we just try to get the guys who are freshmen up to our play level and up to the speed level so that if something was to go wrong, we won't miss a beat. And I just feel with our offense, we're able to get great looks and get the field of fast-paced offense. So therefore, once we get into Hampton and get into our schedule, it won't be no biggie because we've been doing this every day. So, I mean, any guy that's on the field, he's a great player. He's a great role player. If he's on the field, he deserves to be there. I know you haven't played a game yet, but how do you see the <clears throat> excuse me? How do you see the defense as being better than last year? I mean, have you seen improvement from uh, last season? Yes, ma'am, definitely. Uh, well, just going off last season, uh, we had a lot of missed assignments as a defense, and uh, that plays a big role in being a defensive player. I mean, we're assignment defense as far as everybody has to do their own job. Mm -hmm. So, a missed error that could score a touchdown that fast. So it's as far as mistake-wise, we have limited our mistakes, and everybody is just um, more comfortable with knowing their assignment and doing their assignment as well. So. Um, the offensive guys mentioned um, the, the amount of film studying that they've done to cut down on mental errors. Um, does that factor in for you guys too, or um, are, are there is there another system also that you guys employ in order to cut down on mental mistakes? Um, I just want to say here at Kentucky State University, we have great coaches. 
And our coaches, they hold us to a standard. So when we're in the film room or the meeting rooms, everything that you're supposed to do is written up for you, is drawn up. So as long as you're willing to put the time in and to study these plays, you shall be successful. Um, we do actually watch a lot of film. We have a lot of meeting time. So therefore, we're bonded as a team. And like I said before, with our coaches, their expectations for us, we have no choice but to follow through with what they're teaching us and to be great learners and be great thinkers. So I believe that the program itself, it puts us in a position to cut down on the mental errors and to be better football players and have better play recognition just by the things that we do daily and what we go through every day. I know you were talking about being more comfortable this year. Is that because you, did you have a lot of, I know a lot of freshmen, but did you have a lot of freshmen playing on defense last year too? Um, yes, ma'am. And then we also had uh, just different altercations. It was just, you know, uh, a lot of stuff outside as my coach touched up on when he was speaking, uh, just a lot of stuff outside the stadium, just outside of these walls that interfered with uh, our focus a little bit, I would say. And um, this year we in between our walls and we just focused on us and being our own team. Okay. Um, last year, I know with the offense, um, they had um, specific people who were main contributors, uh, primarily just because of who they were and everything. So a lot of them, a lot of things ran right through those guys. And you also have some guys that were standouts on defense as well. Um, has your philosophy as a defensive unit kind of changed so that um, you're not relying on a few big names in order to make plays or um, do you still have your, your key people who are like your leaders that you're expecting to make a play? Um, our coach, one thing about our coach, he's going to put 11 playmakers on the field. So. Uh, one thing about our coach, he's going to put 11 players on the field regardless to uh, make a play. And um, as far as our defense, we say we're aggressive. we got an aggressive defensive coordinator. And um, we feed off of him. So when he when he gets energized, we get energized. And all of us are going to go out there hungry to make a play. So you never know who it could be. It could be him. He sometimes I feed off of them. They feed off of me sometimes. We all just beat off each other, and all 11 of us are hungry for a play. Yeah, just to base touch off of that, I feel like here at the school, like how he says, our coaches is, they're in us. They're drilling us, like the expectations. So we trust in him that he's going to put the right people on the field and that he's going to give us the right tools to use on the field so that when we're out there, there's no thinking. We're just playing. And Yes, we had players leave us last year due to graduation, but here at Kentucky State, the way they coach us, we're not missing a beat. So if your teammate was to go down, you will believe in the next man because he's getting coached just as hard as you are, and he's laying everything on the line just as well as you are. So we have a great system, and we all believe in one another. And like Trey said, you never know. He may be the energy spark one game, they may be the energy spark the next game, or it may all be in one game, and we all just a brotherhood, so you know, we're down the ride for each other and pick up one another. Is there a specific team that you're looking at um, really going up against that maybe they've given you some, uh, some problems in the past that you're like, hey, now, you know, we're showing you that we're a different unit now. You're not going to do this or you're not going to do that this year. Um, I feel like as far as here, as far as the team, I feel like there's no team that I fear or think about when I'm sleeping other than my own team. I feel like since I've been here, we've been our own biggest enemies. We've been our own biggest battle, our own biggest challenges. So I feel like with my brothers, we can go and line up and play against anyone. It don't matter who you are, where you are. Long as we're prepared and long as we know what we're doing and we're ready, I don't, I don't see the team. So I don't 
to answer that question, no, there's no team in this conference or no team around that I would even have to second chance going into war with with my brothers. You got quiet on that. <laughs> we got to get you to say a few things. And I got my mouthpieces with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have a, a goal as a as a unit? I know your um, coach um, talked about um, him believing that you are one of the top uh, defensive units in the country. Uh, do you have a specific goal to uh, to validate what he said? I mean, us as a unit, our our goal each and every week is to have a shutout defense. No matter who we playing against, who we going against, that's our goal, and that's what we look to do each and every play, each and every down, each and every game. We plan on being the best defense in the nation, whether it's Division One or Division Two. We feel like we are the best de defense around, and we plan to play like that each and every day, each and every game. And that's how we practice, and that's how we go about it. Um, have you, uh, I think Coach probably mentioned, or I know Mr. Stinson mentioned the input uh, of alumni, alumni coming around. Have you talked to, have any of the alumni from previous um, years came come to talk to you or come to try to inspire you guys or anything because there have been times when Kentucky State's been at the top or near the top of the nation um, defensively. Yes. So have any of those past guys come and say anything to you guys yet? Yes, we have a few alumni who come back to practices and uh, sometimes certain scrimmages they come back and just watch us and they might give us a speech before or after the game just to let us know how they feel or just what they see. And we take we take the input seriously, and we apply it to what we do, and we we go about it the right way. I said we we respect all our alumni, and we appreciate each of them coming out to take their time out to come to see us. And I said they do come out and they they do talk to us, and we do appreciate them being there for us. And Coach Glove, uh, he's an alumni, and he's here every day. You gotta love him. Every day. <laughs> see him before you walk in the stadium. See him when you're walking out. He's sitting there waiting on you. Well, and um, I know I've talked to the office guys about Mr. Rich. Um, can you uh, give us some, some uh, insight about uh, contributions that Coach Glover has given you? Because um, he is a historic uh, figure, even with uh, professional football. I believe he, he told me years ago that I think he was like the first uh, linebacker, African-American linebacker in the NFL. So. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, Coach Glove, he teaches, well, he teaches me something every day. I'm not sure as other players. He talks to all of us, so, but um, <laughs> I always make a special stop to talk to Coach Glove just because um, he loves the game, and it's hard to find someone with that kind of passion for the game. I'm not sure how old Coach Glove is, but he's here every day, and he's on time. And, I mean, it's just it's just a little stuff that I notice about him, and um as far as my game, I'm surprised he sees me on the field, but I could come out the field and he would just call me over there to talk to him, tell me about my feet, uh, get your feet straight. He would show me something with hand movements, anything. And um, I just have a whole lot of respect for him, honestly. Oh, I'm saying too, um, when I'm walking out to the field, I always see Coach Glove just sitting in his car and I always make a stop by myself. Hey, what's up, Coach? How you doing today? He gonna give me a little word of advice for each day. Every day he got something new to tell me, and I always just take it and I listen to it. I know he's a vet. I know he knows what he's talking about. And like Trayvon said, he loves the game. He's here every day. Even if we're not here, he's still here. So <laughs> when it comes to Coach Glove, he's the GOAT, and I respect the GOAT. I mean, like these guys say, like Coach Glove is part of our coaching staff, basically. When we get a schedule, he get a schedule, so. We respect what he said. He's legendary. And he's always vital information for us. Whether it's a, whether it's we're in the weight room, we're just having our feet right on the bench, to outside at practice, to being in the right position, he's going to correct us. He's going to be there for us. Um, last question that I have um, is on academics. I already asked the offensive guy and everything, so we have to ask you defensive guy. Um, do the units have a competition as to which one is going to have the highest overall GPA or anything like that? Um, or is it just uh, one for all, all for one type deal with the entire team? I mean, 
any of the individual the, guys even yes. you know have you know have competition with each other as far as who's gonna have the highest GPA. Yes, so on defense, we usually have uh, that one academic standout that everybody just knows, um, and we just respect them. And uh, sometimes we need help because I mean, not everybody is uh, at the same level as far as academic wise. So if we have one player that has a 4.0, if we need some help, we just go to him and ask him for help. But as far as our personal. Me and this guy, we've been in Mr. Rich's office probably this whole week. <laughs> Seriously. And I mean, Mr. Rich, he does a whole lot of stuff for football players, basketball players. I mean, just all athletics. And um, he contacts our professors for us. If we need anything as far as academic wise or we're having a problem, struggling, we just go to Mr. Rich and uh, he'll find a solution for us. If not, he'll send us to somebody to find a solution. What he says, um, when it comes to academics, for me, um, my guy is Mr. Rich. Um, any type of things, whether it's dealing with schedule, or teacher conference, or whatever it may be, he's going to really find a solution. And as a team, we have a lot of athletes who really put their time into school. And you know, not everyone's dream is to play at the next level in the NFL. So he had a lot of people who are really student athletes. That, they're really students when they're here on campus. So. It's a great thing and it's a nice way to bring everyone along and you know what I'm saying, make sure everyone gets their degree and graduate. That's the big picture. And like some of the officer guys said earlier, like we're um, we have plenty of study time. Like our coaches make sure we get together with study hall. And like Trayvon said, we have those guys who are on the team who with the four point and the three point five so we can go to who also can give us help and guidance. And a lot of times we come from good backgrounds with parents who are pushing us. Now they, even though they're not here, that they're here, we hear them. So we know that they're pushing us to get, get good academics first. Thank you all. Thank you.